Good afternoon, Tackle Traders, and hello, YouTube. This is Frank coming to you with the market recap for Monday, July 30th. Another day of selling uh, over on our broad markets. Still working our way through earnings. Hope everyone had a wonderful weekend and ready to get back to work. Uh, starting off, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about those earnings. Uh, Cat was the big name that came out uh, today, came out before the market opened, had a little pop on the open, but as you can see here, uh, was not able to maintain that as the selling pressure was in the market, uh, brought it down. Uh, so definitely quite a bit of selling in the market and CAT did not escape uh, unscathed uh, whatsoever. A uh, few other S&P companies did report before the open uh, as well. Uh, today after the market closed, uh, just a handful of, relatively speaking, smaller size companies, uh, you know, again, compared to maybe an Apple or, or a CAT, but Illumina, uh, Bernardo Realty Trust. So a few companies coming out here tonight uh, before or after the market closed. Uh, tomorrow before the open, a couple of real big names in Pfizer and Procter and Gamble uh, are coming up. But quite a few companies reporting here tomorrow before the open, as you can see. Uh, so still uh, still in the thick of things. It'll be interesting to see how uh, how we do on, on Pfizer uh, for me at least. That's something I'm interested in. Um, and of course. The big one tomorrow after the close is Apple. We'll talk about that when we get together tomorrow. We'll have a little bit of an idea of how they did. So uh, that will not impact us tomorrow necessarily, but uh, tomorrow market market day. But it definitely will probably impact the market uh, going forward. So uh, that's where we find ourselves uh, in our earnings right now. Uh, so be sure to be on top of that for anything that you are working with. Uh, of course, uh, we all know we had quite a bit of selling in the overall market today, particularly in tech, uh, here we have the NASDAQ, um, has retraced back to that trend line just, just south of its 50-day moving average where it closed here today, just a bit below that 50-day moving average. Uh, I think, and I think a lot of other people do as well, that this is a pretty important support level. Um, obviously, you know, no buyers were coming in at the end of the day off of that candle, uh, but if we were to see you know, some potential bull step back in, that probably wouldn't be terribly shocking uh, we certainly would like to see it, uh, if, if we're bullish at least. Uh, so we'll see how that looks tomorrow. Love to see a little bit of a turnaround candle uh, if you're a bull. Uh, if you're a bear, you're probably hoping for a violation of that 50-day moving average, a violation of that trend. So uh, do keep an eye on that. That is certainly uh, something a lot of folks are looking at uh, right now. Um, S&P, just, uh, just like the NASDAQ, sold off a, a fair amount today. We still continue to hold our breakout point, so haven't changed a lot technically as long as we can hold that breakout point uh, on the S&P. Uh, we're still technically speaking in a bullish breakout uh, situation. Uh, the Dow kind of closed right about that old uh, breakout point, so it too is just kind of hanging right, uh, right above its old resistance. Uh, of course, the Russell, who has been definitely, uh, technically at least, having the, most, the, the weakest signals, uh, after its break of support uh, last week, closed below the 50 on Friday. Uh, of course, I uh, closed even further below the 50 uh, here today. We did actually test the 50 a day or pretty darn close on the intraday uh, on the Russell. I uh, completely flipped it around uh, at that point. And of course, we closed near the low uh, as, uh, on the Russell, as we did on many of our, our indexes. Uh, one good habit, I think, to get into is you know get in there, mark up the charts, identify where you think the next levels of support uh, that potentially will hold it up. That's going to apply whether you're in a bearish trade. You know, if I'm bearish right now, I've got a close eye on that previous support level because I probably shouldn't be terribly surprised if it puts up a fight there again. If I'm a bull and I'm just kind of, well, let's sit through this thing, let's let it retrace, that might be a place where I can anticipate, again, we'll have to see when we get there, but as a potential buying opportunity. So whether, you know, wherever I find myself identifying these key points, uh, I think is a very uh, helpful thing that maybe not enough people uh, people do. So um, hard to say anything other than those are pretty bearish candles uh, right now, breaking support, failing at resistance, closing below the 50 uh, for the second day. Uh, so certainly uh, not a lot of bullish sentiment going on in small caps uh, as we speak, uh, that is for sure. Uh, coming into our sectors, we continue to kind of hang around in that little triangle that we've got developed in the material sector. Not a whole lot of action, uh, dramatic action, uh, I guess, today. We did see some selling, of course, uh, but we find ourselves in that same pattern. Energy is in an interesting place. Uh, strong day for oil, strong day for energy. 
Uh, we've been you know, bouncing back and forth within this trading range for quite some time. Today, we find ourselves at the top of this trading range uh, with some overhead resistance a couple of dollars ahead of us there. Uh, this is a place where I think as traders, we want to start to be thinking about decisions. Uh, if I'm a bull, do I want to get out of resistance? If I struggle here, you know, again, that probably shouldn't surprise me. Do I feel it's worth risking, you know, potential profits that I've made over the last week uh, or so to see if we can break through that resistance? And maybe I say yes, maybe I say no, but I want to have that debate uh, for sure. Um, if I'm a, a bear, is this a place where potentially I want to look to start constructing uh, an entry uh, from a bearish point of view? Or even if I'm trading sideways, is this a place where you know, maybe I'm doing a condor, I want to uh, set up that bear call uh, side of that condor trade? Just want to always you know, be thinking about these things. I may not do any of them, you may not do any of them, uh, but it's always a good idea to think about them. Uh, if you do break this resistance, would that be something, you know, am I comfortable trying to work to the next level? Um, so that's a pretty important place. I always like when we're at what I call the edges because either resistance holds, uh, and, uh, and that happens a lot, or resistance breaks, and you know, ultimately whether I like it or not, presents me a, a, a potential bullish uh, breakout opportunity. So very interesting placement, I believe, uh, in our energy uh, sector ETF right now. Uh, same thing with, uh, with our financials. We continue to struggle at that resistance, continue to hold our own, not really seeing a ton of selling, which is, which is nice if you're uh, on the bullish side of things, but certainly having a hard time breaking through that resistance. So we haven't really changed too much from where we were last week on the technical side of things. But remember, when we get to these resistance levels, we, we need to expect the fight. And you know, there's, ultimately there's a right answer, but we need to make the call, am I willing to sit through this resistance? Am I willing to give you the benefit of the doubt, risk some of my potential gains uh, if, I'm, if I'm already in you, uh, to see if you can break through that resistance? Because we could potentially falter at resistance like we saw the industrial sector today, kind of pushed its way up to it, and then of course a lot of selling steps into place. So we always want, we always want to be the ones making those decisions. We don't want the market to just push us around. We want to be the, the, the trader saying, hey, if I'm at resistance, I choose to stick around. I think it's worth the risk of failing at resistance for the upside if we break, or I don't think it's worth that risk. Or maybe I want to scale out, close out a half of the position, or maybe I want to sell some calls against my shares or, or my calls and convert into a bull call spread. We want to be managing these trades all the time, of course. Uh, and we, we have, there's a lot of reasons to believe in these areas of support and resistance that we're going to struggle because we've done it there before. And it's one of the key concepts of technical analysis. So, uh, of course, technology sector, just like the NASDAQ, really took, uh, took it hard today, uh, closing below its 50-day moving average as well. Our old friends uh, in the staples continued their slow methodical grind and are now spending the last few days just uh, below their 200-day moving average. Uh, so not really too much change from where we spoke uh, last week. They did hold their own here today uh, amidst the selling. Uh, utilities did move off of resistance where they they tested on Friday. It's a little bit more downward movement in that, in that sector. Our healthcare sector, we had a little bit of a turnaround candle today after a couple of days of pullback. Uh, certainly, at least according to my rules, not any confirmation candle just yet, but we did see some buyers step back in. Uh, of course, we have Pfizer with its earnings tomorrow, so we'll see how that impacts this sector. Uh, but if you are you know, looking at a potential retracement within the healthcare sector, we of course need that first turnaround candle to get that potential uh, confirmation candle that we might like to see. So uh, we just see a little bit of that show up here today uh, in our uh, discretionary, very much like our, our NASDAQ, we're kind of working towards a trend line at its 50 day moving average. We're a little bit above that, but we are kind of working back into that area in discretionary. Uh, real estate continues to fight at that old breakout point. We tested it on the intraday. We bounced off pretty nicely. Even though we closed in the red, we were a lot redder at that a certain point today. Uh, we did bounce off of that breakout point again, yet again, kind of getting more information that, boy, this, this is a place that buyers are looking at. So, you know, if, that, uh, if I'm a buyer, that might be a place I want to look to construct a trade. If I'm you know, in a trade at that breaks, that might be a place where I have a stop loss a little bit below there. If I'm a bear, that might be a place I'm looking for some potential sell signal. So we, more information in regards to how important uh, it seems traders are viewing that, this, that support level within the real estate right now. So that has been an interesting one to follow. Bounces, uh, 
and pullbacks, but bounces and pullbacks. We'll see if that, that trend continues going into tomorrow. Uh, metals, very similar uh, to where they've been over the last week. They're still kind of hanging around on that uh, little floor that they've been trying to, to build. Uh, nobody's, nobody's really getting on board, but they are kind of holding their own on that floor. Of course, we've talked many times, and until they stop doing it, that trend, it's hard. It's hard for buyers to get on board. It's hard for us to trust a week-long floor. Uh, at least it is hard for me, and I'm not alone from the looks of things. Uh, not a lot of folks are jumping into those metals right now. Uh, another strong date in, uh, in natural gas, continuing this little uh, upward swing, uh, as, uh, as well as uh, crude, another, strong, another positive day for crude coming off of its, uh, its recent bounce. Uh, the dollar dipped a little bit today, but we do still find ourselves within the same trading range that we have been uh, in over, uh, over the last uh, couple of months. So we did see some downward movement, uh, but we did not break anything technically, at least as of, uh, as of yet. Um, important to note, the Bank of Japan is having a monetary policy meeting uh, here uh, today slash this evening. So that will be something that can impact tomorrow's open. So we want to make sure we're taking a close look at that uh, on uh, you know, before, before the day begins here tomorrow, along with our various earnings uh, on, uh, on these big name companies. So do keep that in mind uh, as, uh, as you get into tomorrow's open. With that, ladies and gentlemen, as always, it is my pleasure. I certainly appreciate everybody's time. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and head on over to the Tackle Trading YouTube channel. Subscribe, hit that bell for the notifications. If you uh, enjoyed this video, I uh, always appreciate a thumbs up. We will look forward to you in the next one. Happy trading all.